Good afternoon. Um, welcome to our first cook along. I'm just going to remind you of the ingredients before we get started. Which you probably can't see that way, so I'm going to read them out. You're going to need 15 grams of unsalted butter, one leek, one stick of celery, a small head of cauliflower, 450 grams of pasta, one tablespoon of dried flour, sorry, plain flour, 500 mils of semi skim milk, one teaspoon of English mustard, 100 grams of mixed cheese. I'm actually using 200 grams today because it's just to make it a bit more cheesy, so please feel free to either use 100 grams or 200 grams. Um, you'll need 100 grams of stale bread, which we're going to blitz up, two cloves of garlic, and a few sprigs of fresh herbs or dried herbs. I'm going to use dried herb today because it's little bit easier and more convenient and some olive oil and obviously salt and pepper um, okay so I'll give everyone a few minutes to arrive and then we'll get started I'll just shift the camera a bit I think okay so bear with me today um, this is a Jamie Oliver recipe that I've adapted slightly um, but it is the first time I've cooked it as well so I'll be cooking along with you guys um, from scratch um, without not, not knowing uh, what to do, basically. So it could be a disaster or it could be a lot of fun. Um, so hopefully you've all got your bits and bobs ready to get started and um, we can get cracking. The first thing you really should do is get a couple of pans of water and just get them ready. So one's going to be used to do the pasta and the other one's going to be used to do the cauliflower. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to do well, the first thing we're going to do is cut our leek and our celery. So it's one leek and it needs to be sliced and cut quite finely. I'm just going to do that. And then that will go into my casserole pot with some butter and just cook down. and then the celery again, do it again quite finely, you can see this. Hello guys, so I've got Heather, Tom, Sam, Amy, are you all cooking with me or are you just watching? As I say, I am going to be really good today and try no swear words and uh, try not to be clumsy like Miranda but my cooking style is very much a mix of um, Nigella for innuendos. Miranda Hart for clumsiness and probably Keith Floyd as well because I do sometimes when I'm cooking my videos have a glass of wine to relax and then I'm a bit too relaxed. Okay, so um, butter. Now I've got about 15 grams of butter which I'm going to melt. Now it did say on the recipe unsalted but um, salted is fine, it's absolutely fine. So just let that melt and hopefully you guys have seen that we've now got all our Christmas uh, fair up online. There's still more to come but there's some great gifts. We've got lots of truffle sets and uh, um, we have Christmas wreaths. You can also grab a Christmas tree if you come on the drive through from the 21st Lowfield Farm just down the road from us. They're going to start um, selling Christmas trees and they're doing it a week earlier than normal because they kind of think that I think everyone wants to really start celebrating Christmas have something to look forward to and enjoy now and um, so yeah down in coach in just outside devices you can get your Christmas trees at all different sizes okay. and today you might have noticed um, if you again if you pop into our Christmas shop um, online We've added three new Christmas recipe boxes. So we've got um, a pavlova, Christmas wreath pavlova. We've got a, um, a vegetarian baklava um, instead of a nut roast for a change. And we've also got some canopies. Um, so hopefully that'll make your life easier. Okay, I'm now going to pop the leek and the, I was going to say courgette then, but it's not, it's celery into the pan just dropped it down there look there she 
goes. Miranda's on the <laughs> rampage. All right, let that coat through. We might need to add a little bit more butter. Open it up. My two of the pans are now boiling. I don't know if anybody else is cooking me. I'm just going to have a, a look. So sorry if you see up my nose. Um, hello. Hello, Ken. <laughs> anybody else saying anything? Hi, Courtney. <laughs> right. So while that's cooking, I am now going to... Actually, I was going to say, can everyone actually hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me. Yeah? Good. Okay, I'm getting a little bit hot now. I'm just going to open my window. I don't want to put the extractor fan on because it gets quite noisy. Oh, what's she saying? Ah, oh, perfect, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, so these are cooking down. So I'd love to know what everybody else is planning on cooking for Christmas this year. Are you going for a traditional turkey? Um, or are you going to do something slightly different like a beef wellington? That's what we had last year. I obviously had a, a nut roast. Um, but again, you can get all pre-order all the meats from us. Oh, is that someone saying, hi, ah, yes, you can hear us. Good, thank you. Um, get all the meats you need, pre-book your vegetables, everything like that. So we've kind of got pretty much got everything you need for Christmas this year. We've got Christmas puddings being make, made by the Red Dragon, I think it's the Red Dragon, in Market Lavington. Um, can't see the vino. No, I'm staying off the wine right now. I might have a gin and tonic later. I've just had a cup of tea to calm my nerves. Um, but yeah, I'm staying off the vino for the time being, Kate. Okay? That's too dangerous. I've lost my train of thought. Yes, we've got Christmas puddings coming from Market Lavington. Um, and we've got mince pies. We've got, oh, we've got mulled cider. I think that's Amy's favourite in the office. Um, gosh, there's all sorts of things. May, as I said earlier, some amazing truffle sets, which are perfect. If you've got anybody in your, in your family that loves cooking, then that is the perfect gift. The other thing that we've got, these are cooking down nicely now, um, is we released a Christmas blog and it's got this, I'll show you actually, advent calendar that I've created. So it's got lots of things to do um, with reminders about when the last day is to order. So for instance, the 6th of December for your meat is the last day to order. Um, and then we've got lots of things like bake a Christmas Yule log, um, take some, basically do some toy boxes, wear your Christmas jumper. There's all sorts of things on here. It's lots of fun. You can do this with your family, something to keep you busy over December. Okay. Okay, so it's cooking down nicely. So while this is cooking, I'm going to pop my, my pasta in. And that, because it's macaroni, it doesn't need so long. I, I forgot, I had to time all this stuff as well while I'm talking. Um, so that's going to come out in about eight minutes. And I should be getting on with this too. I'm going to grab your um, florets, and it was a small head of bro broccoli, cauliflower. And then what we need to do, it's about 600 grams, is get the flor floret and slice it. So it's kind of thin, not too thin, probably about a centimetre slices. Than you think talking and cooking and trying to keep an eye on everything. So here we go, we're slicing the florets, and they're going to go into boil for about five minutes in a separate pan. I was going to put them in the same pan as the pasta, and you can do that if you've got a big enough pan. Um, I'm going to put them in the smaller, smaller ones, so they will take roughly five minutes to cook. And there she goes again, throwing it everywhere. So here we go, that all goes in. Okay, pop the lid on that. Get it really quickly. Right, I'm just gonna tidy that off. Let's just see what you're saying. Okay. How many have we got watching? We've got 11 of you. Don't be shy. If you need to, if you want to ask any questions or give me any hints and tips, because this is the first time I've made it, then please feel free. 
hints and tips, turn your, turn your hob down on the leaves because mine have started to burn a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more bash on them. Ah! There we go. Veranda's out. Boiling over. helper with this. One to keep an eye on the cooking and the other one to draw two men show me. I think um, Courtney and I are going to do a double show, so split screen. She can't get away with it now that I've said that as well. Okay, so they've cooked down nice, they're just going to keep an eye on that they don't burn. Like an old Krypton Factor episode. Right. Now I'm just going to turn the heat off the leeks for now because they are cooked and we have to wait for the pasta to boil and the cauliflower. So the other thing you can do in the meantime, while you're waiting for everything else to cook, is do your um, breadcrumbs. So 100 grams, and I've already blitzed mine up because it, my, my blitzer is so, um, so noisy, that's the word I was looking for, can't think, um, that I thought I'd do it in advance. So I've blitzed up some stale bread that I had that, uh, rather than check it out, great use of it. And with this, what I'm going to add into this is two cloves of garlic. That's going to go over again. I've got these huge gar garlic bowls, actually. I'll tell you what's great to do with these garlic, which I had in, um, I think it was in the Bell in West Overton. They um, roast these with some olive oil and honey, and then you get some of the homemade bread with it, and you squeeze them out and rub it on the bread, um, and it's absolutely delicious. Really, really delicious. Okay, so here goes. I am going to just take the ends off and do that. No, it doesn't work. I'm sorry if I waffle. I do waffle. The advantage of doing a video that I can then edit is I can edit all the waffle out. This I can't. Right. Okay, I've got this, this nifty contraption. I love this. Apparently using one of these gives you a stronger flavour. Well, that's what uh, Nigella said last night on her TV programme. Whereas if you kind of crush and chop it's a mild flavour but I do like a good strong flavour. Right, I am going to add some herbs and these are mixed herbs from Heritage that we have into that and just stir it all in. And then the recipe says to add a bit of olive oil which I think is going to make it a little bit clumpy but we'll see. Doesn't work, I should be on the phone to Jamie. So, mix that all in. That's oh, okay, actually. And this is going to be your topping to put on your pasta. Hopefully you've uh, caught up with me. If not, don't worry, you can always review the video afterwards. And what I'm going to do today is just prep it until it gets put in the bowls. Um, this will serve six, so normally, if you're doing for six, you probably use a bowl, a big bowl about this size, but I am actually going to um, dish it up into some smaller bowls because I'm going to make an individual portion for my son for when he gets back from school and then my husband and I tend to eat a lot later so I'll do uh, another portion for that, for that and then I'm going to freeze a couple so you can freeze it before it's been in the oven and it's fine. You, you can get some of these Tupperwares or 
I've got some of these which are quite useful because then you can just slap it straight in the oven for when it's defrosted, of course. Right, so I'm just going to test. That's about done. Alright, I'd say I've got macaroni, but it's still, still going to be a bit longer. I'm going to drain my cauliflower. Excuse me a minute. Okay, so that's drained and ready to go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be looking at doing in a minute, but I'm gonna, I am gonna drain my pasta first. So I'm just gonna wait a minute. I just grab the cup. The recipe says you need to um, keep about a cup full of pasta water um, just to loosen up the sauce. And also with this one, which is quite unusual for like a macaroni cheese. It's 500 ml of uh, milk and then 500 ml of water. So we'll see how that works. It's not something I've done before. I normally always do my cheese sauces with uh, all milk, but who knows, we'll give it a try. It's Jamie Oliver, so he knows best. Okay, what is doing? Another minute. Okay. Oh, yeah. The other thing I've forgotten about, it's not on the ingredients, but I always like a little bit of spice. So I'm adding in some crushed chilies into the topping too. A teaspoon's fine, teaspoon enough. I kind of tend to just throw in what I think. Just mix that in. Oh! Down a bit, then it doesn't. Pasta for beginners. Okay. So I was talking about what you're going to make for Christmas. Uh, so this year, I think well, there's going to be four of us. And I think this Christmas, um, my son's asked for turkey, so I'll probably get a turkey crown, freeze half of it. And then uh, my stepdaughter and my husband, I think they said they wanted pork. Um, so I'll be doing pork for them. And then I am going to definitely try the savoury baklava that um, we've added on the website today. And then, oh, pudding, gosh, I think. We'll definitely, definitely, definitely have to try one of those Christmas puddings. Um, but then sometime during Christmas, we have to have a trifle. It's kind of a tradition now. So, yeah, trifle for pudding. Right, I think that the macaroni will be about ready now. So, before I forget, it's oh, probably not the best way to do it. Just going to get a cup full of water. Actually, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm just going to drain this. I'll be back with you. Alright. So I've got my cup full of starchy water. I'm just, just drain my pasta. I've not run away, I promise. I've actually thrown half of it on the floor. A little bit on the floor, not half. Being a drama queen. Four bits. Not as bad as the other day where I poured a whole saucepan of uh, pasta. Where's my thing? A whole saucepan of pasta all down the sink by accident. Right. Okay. So I am now going to do the um, the white sauce. So this is done in. Um, every way, I'll move this out of the way. So I've already measured out a tablespoon of flour. 
and we need butter. I'm going to put a little bit more butter in. I'm a bit of a butter person today. And it's going to go directly in with the leeks and the celery. Okay, so if you haven't made a roux, it's really simple. But I, I tend, I know some people don't like these metal um, whisks, but for making a smooth white sauce, I always think they're the, the best. I don't know if anyone else has any other, any other views, but this is um, normally my way. Okay, so add your flour. Can you see that? The flour's in. And then just literally stir it in. And it makes like a, well, kind of like a, a lump. Okay. So do this for about 30 seconds to one minute, just so all the flour cooks out. this now make sure your oven is now put on to 180 I know some of you will be preparing this now and then you can leave it on the side and put it in the oven when you want but if you want it in the oven uh, after this stage put your oven on now at 180 okay so now I'm going to slowly headbutt the <laughs> extractor pan oh goodness should have had that glass of wine K oh my goodness all right a bit at a time. I don't know how I got talked into doing this, I really don't. Might have been Tom saying that uh, I'd have my P45 if I didn't. I still not got through my probation. Things I do. Okay, so that's starting to thicken up, so just keep adding. This sauce is apparently meant to be sloppy. Um, looks very sloppy. I'm tempted not to add the water in, but we'll see. I think with a lot of recipes, you kind of um, do the basics of it and then just amend it to, to, to how you want. Look at me. Look at this mess. Dear me. the water. Right. Oh dear, I hope I didn't put that cleaning fluid into the sauce. That's going to taste delightful. All right, there we go. Hide that out of the way. Right, so just keep stirring that. We'll season it in a minute. Um, ah, we're going to add some um, cheese and the secret, it's not a secret ingredient, Coles mustard. My son said he didn't like mustard and sauce, so we made pasta last week and we just put it in and didn't tell him. He didn't know any different. What's that say now? Ah. Okay. Oh, I'm doing it again, look at this. Just right, I'm just going to check my recipe because I say I have not done this before. Right. Okay, so you need to add some water in it. It says 500 ml, but I am not going to make it that sloppy. I'm breaking the rules. Always add some more afterwards. I'm going to season it with salt and pepper, and you need to be generous. This is quite a fine one, it takes quite a long time, so it might seem like I'm putting tons of pepper in on the hot. Salt. Right. And we're going to put in a teaspoon. 
mustard, a big teaspoon. And just add that in. I mean, if you really love mustard, add in two teaspoons. Okay, so that's it. I'm now going to add in, um, I'm probably going to put in about 150 grams and then the, the last bit I'll leave to sprinkle over the top of the breadcrumbs. So I've got in here some, a mix of red chest, red chester, red Leicester, um, some twanger, which is I think down near Glastonbury, and then some cheddar. So whack that all in. And again, you know, do this to your own taste. So if you, if you don't like it so cheesy, although it is a cheesy mac, then don't add so much. If you like it cheesy, add more. But you will be adding on calories. Although this, uh, this recipe, um, I don't think we'll even go there. Let's not go there. Okay, so stir this in. Oh dear. Grab yourself a coffee, or a wine, or a gin and tonic. Okay. Right, I am just going to bring my dishes over and start adding in. I might need some of those. While this is going, I'm going to multitask and stir that as well as. Oh dear. Alright, so. Add some of your pasta to your dishes, throwing it everywhere. That dish isn't going to be big enough, I don't think. Let's do that. Right. Where's that one? I'm going to make a couple, couple of stick in the freezer for meals. Massive uh, pot. So I've got some left over there, you see. Right, add your cauliflower. Stirring your sauce. Just mix it in. I think we'll concentrate on the big, the big thing here. Okay. Mix that in. All right. I'll go back on the sauce and just keep it going a bit. See if I've got any other questions to ask you guys. I did prepare a list just in case it got very quiet. Yes. Right. Who, who is your favourite chef? Who do you like watching on telly the best? Is it Gordon Ramsay, Mary Berry, uh, Nigella, somebody else? Anybody? I would say mine is probably Mary Berry. 
I think she's uh, pretty cool. And obviously she's really local in uh, Bath. It'd be nice to get her to do a cook along for us. Okay, so this sauce, it does take quite a while to cook down. It's not a quick thing. I'm just gonna taste it for seasoning actually. As I say, if you haven't already ordered your Christmas box, um, we do have the Christmas shop open and you can have any size of box. Um, so starting, we've, we've kind of sized them in boxes for two, boxes for four, boxes for six and also put um, some luxury ones on. So with the luxury boxes you get extra added things like um, mince pies, crackers, coffee, fresh ground coffee, that sort of thing. So it's just really convenient and saves you the hassle of going to a supermarket or even not ordering online with a supermarket because you have to buy all the individual things. You know, what Ken's done is create some fantastic boxes that have a bit of everything in that you'd need for the perfect Christmas dinner. And then if you buy one of those boxes and if there's anything else you need, just add, add to your order. You know, maybe you want to go for some nice... Um, a Beckett's wine, make it special. They've got some fantastic sparkling wine. Um, or, you know, we've got some really, um, look at that. <laughs> we've got some really great ales added. Obviously, um, we've got ones from Stonehenge. We've got ones from Arkles. We've got some from the local brewer in Melksham, um, Stealth Brew. Um, and then we've got uh, Lily Cider. And we've got this fantastic mulled wine cider. Mulled wine? Yeah, mulled, mulled cider, I should say, not mulled wine. Mulled cider. So, yeah, um, definitely worth a look for sure. And then some really lovely, we've kind of um, joined up with low fields and we can, we've got the wreaths online now. So that's, you know, grab your box and get a Christmas wreath at the same time. Right, it's starting to thicken up a bit, but not much. I think it's fine. I'm just going to clear up the mess again. Oh dear. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is if any of you um, work for a local business and um, it's not operating at the moment, so maybe you're um, in, uh, or even actually crafts, whatever, if you're one of our customers or you're one of the people we supply um, and you'd like to draw attention to your company, just create a little video for us, anything from a minute long to 10 minutes long, cooking one of your favourite dishes and um, email us. And we'll pop it online and give you a, a bit of a mention. And then we've got quite a few businesses that have signed up to do it over the next few weeks over lockdown. We kind of want to get everyone cooking um, and using fresh produce. And what better way than rather than me do all the cooking, you guys do all the cooking. And it's nice actually when other people cook, you pick up some great ideas and inspiration. So, you know, I have my kind of things I like to cook. Um, and that might be boring for a lot of people. Um, and uh, so we've got one coming up tomorrow from Katie, who is the food and beverage manager at the Lansdowne Strand. They've obviously had to close. Um, they're an Arkles pub. But she is cooking um, jerk chicken with some green rice. Um, she's done a little video for us. And we'll give you all the recipe details for that tomorrow. And then we've got... Hopefully, I think Times Square and Devices are doing something for us this week. Um, we've got other people, Gastro Nicks are going to do, I think Jill from Gastro Nicks is going to do 
a little video for us. Um, and there's lots of other people actually. Uh, and then we've also done quite a few interviews with people, local people, just to also, if they're not so comfortable doing um, a video, just talking with them about what they do, um, how we can support local their local business during lockdown, this sort of thing. So yeah, it's um, we've got some fun things and things to look at, look forward to in lockdown, but please do get involved, cook for us, cook with us. Um, yeah, this is starting to get to a point where it's more ready. Um, and then what I'm going to do is pour this over these dishes, top them with the breadcrumbs and a bit of extra cheese, and then they'll be ready to go in the oven and we'll be finished. And then what I was going to say is anybody who makes this, if you can post a picture later on of your finished dish, that would be great. Even if you don't cook it till tomorrow, even if you've just kind of popped in to watch a bit and you're going to catch up later and see how it's gone, it'd be great if you could give some feedback. And also, you know, it's great to have some feedback on these videos. Um, just let me know what you think. Please don't troll me. Um, yeah. Right, this is about ready. So I'm going to grab a bigger spoon. Just make sure I haven't forgotten anything before I start spinning these in. Uh, da -da -da. Right, it does say the sauce will thicken as it breaks. So there we go, we're fine. Okay, so basically, now this could get messy, so no laughing. I'm just gonna splatoosh it over. And as I say, I'm just gonna do this one and I'll do the other ones afterwards. of mess. I'll just give it a bit of a squidge down. There we go. I almost forgot you were there actually. There we go. Right, so that one's quite squishy. What I might do, which I recommend, is just is just Push it in a bit so the leak actually goes in as well a bit more. Just give it all a bit of a squish round. There we go. Okay, now. So, I have some extra cheese. I've got my um, breadcrumbs. So literally, grab the breadcrumbs and Throw most of it on the countertop and a little bit on the pot. There we go. And this goes in really nice. I'm actually quite looking forward to eating this now, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie Oliver. And then a little bit more cheese. And then I suggest after you've eaten this that you go and uh, cycle it off for about two hours. <laughs> right. And then um, there, in between all my mess, it should look like this. And then you need to pop that in the oven for 180 and um, for 30 minutes and then take it out and yum it up. So that's my bake along for the day. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I can see there's still, there's still actually people watching it. It's amazing. Um, and I don't know how to turn this off. Oh, you see the finish button. So I hope you all enjoyed it, um, enjoyed my mess. And please feedback whether you thought it was any good, if you want us to do any more. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing you again. Take care, bye.